Yeah, Wednesday. What's up, everybody? Wednesday morning. Welcome to today's edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I'm your host, Chuck Fulkerson. Hope everybody had a great trading day yesterday as we are rolling into the middle of the week. Pretty nice sell-off yesterday morning before then a recovery in the afternoon as we did find a little bit of demand in some of our major markets as the S&P is up about 25 points this morning and the NASDAQ is up about 94. Uh, we are seeing a little bit of a rally in gold uh, as we're staying above our breakout line and so a couple of interesting pieces. If you're new to the channel, do me a favor, click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you get the alerts and the updates. And real quick, question of the day. Uh, question of the day, when you are looking at your uh, at your time frames, are you using trend analysis? Put it in the comment section down below. I want to start to get a little bit of comment down below. How do you use or are you using trend analysis in your determination? Uh, because I do run into a lot of traders that don't use trend at all. So uh, use the comment section below. Let me know, do you use trend analysis? Okay, let's go ahead and dive in. S&P this morning, we're up 25 points. Uh, now, we did come back into our demand level yesterday, uh, right in this area here, uh, and we got a little bit of a, of a bounce away, and then we retested it again late afternoon, and then in the overnights, we rallied up from that demand area. So that demand area worked out uh, for a fair amount of points. Now, it did pop just a little bit below the, the, the zone, but it didn't get below where our, uh, where our pivot would be, and so no reason for our true stop out in that position. Um, now, if you did the six candle rule, one, two, three, four, five, six, it hadn't really stopped you out at that six candles, but you may have gotten out a bit early before catching any of this run, um, which is never any fun, though sometimes those things do happen. Uh, but as we continue to kind of move up, we did come into our opposing supply area and got a very weak move away from that opposing supply area. Now, when I look at my, my four hour, I can see that my four hour trend is still very much intact. Uh, and so I think that what makes the most sense is to look for a potential breakout area above those highs, provided that we get some quality basing. Um, you know, if you just take it above here, I think you may get caught into a bear trap, uh, excuse me, into a bull trap where, where price breaks above here and then you get a reversal for price to come back down. So I don't know that I would be willing to do that. Um, because of the potential for that little bull trap above the Globex high. But I would look for basing right below here for a price opportunity to get long. Uh, if we get a bit of a pullback, you know, there are some demand areas down here, but I don't know that I would lean on those uh, as much because that's just not a great time of day, right? You're looking at that 5 p.m., 6 p.m. kind of time of day is not the, not the best time of day to find these areas. And so let's look a bit higher. Looking at the NQ, so the NASDAQ yesterday blew right through our uh, our demand zone. So this was the demand zone that we found yesterday, and this was you know a pretty good area where we had a, a rally base rally, and it was right around the European market open. But, I mean, the market just blew right through that level. You then got a second opportunity uh, right here to get long at our, at our level that was this wick over wick area. Price hit that level, got us a little bit of a move away. You, you, you got another opportunity in there at the end of the day. And then as we gapped up um, between our market closes, we got a pretty strong move. So that gap up that we had in there, that was basically an earnings gap play. Uh, as we saw a number of stocks that announced after the bell um, causing that gap to move higher. So now what do we see? Well, I've still got this supply area here up above me. Uh, this is the same level that we looked at in the S and in the, in the, uh, in the S&P that we looked at for a potential breakout above that region, right? So could we see a reversal here? Yeah, we, we very well could if price comes back up into that region. Our four-hour trend is still is still going up and getting higher. I, I think that if you, if you do see an opportunity to get short, it's a fairly clean one, but you would need a confirmation because that is a fairly clean, strong move away. Um, but we do have a big... Uh, a, a big picture upward trend. So that's a little bit more risky, a little bit more exposure. So you can do it. You just need to have that confirmation mentality. All right, next, moving over to crude oil. Now, remember in crude oil, I'm using the September contract, have been for the last couple of days. Um, we did hit this 2335 area 
again yesterday twice and bounced off of it. And I'm feeling like uh, this is still a good breakdown point if we get the basing in front of the level. So keep that area in mind. Not a whole lot to add from that from yesterday's analysis. Uh, and then in the gold markets, we had our move away from this level, which is what we got yesterday. And yesterday in the DMC, we talked about, okay, let's now adjust this to a confirmation entry. Price came in, traded halfway into the level, and then traded away. So it gave you twice you're able to use this level. Now I'm going to remove that zone because I can't use that zone a third time. Three times is, is going to get a little bit too much. Um, however, I will be able to look for this as a potential breakdown area if we get basing in here. We are getting a little bit of a rollover in here off of this wick over wick um, with this uh, tweezer top. All right, moving over to bonds and currency markets. So I want to take a look at the ZN, which is our 10-year note. Uh, we can see that yesterday we did have a supply level that just like our NASDAQ demand level just popped right through. Um, didn't, uh, didn't hold inside of that ZN. Price rallied through that area. We then did, however, get a retest of that level in the overnight. So that concept of old demand acting as new supply, old supply acting as new demand, um, we did get a nice rally up from there in the overnight sessions. So as we continue to move, I, I look up to this area here. This is not a balanced wick over wick. When I say not a balanced one, it's because the lower wick is smaller than the upper wick. And so when I go to a 15 minute chart, uh, go to a little bit smaller time frame uh, and look and see, is there somewhere on here that's a bit cleaner? Um, and the answer for that as I, as I dive in is, is no. Um, I've got a wick over wick right here, but that was already retested by this little level right in there at the open. Um, I've got these upper wicks here. So what that tells me is that none of these supply levels above me are quality enough for me to lean on. And, that, and then looking at the demand, I have this big move up right here, followed by this big move down right in here. Um, and, and when I say big move, I'm, I'm really looking inside these wicks, right? The wicks tell me a story. And so let's look in the 15 minute demand area and see is there anything that's clean enough to look for. And I think that the only and best level would be this area right in here. Now, knowing that it's found on a 15 minute chart, we have to put it in our purple line color. All right, next, moving over to the Australian dollar. We continue to rally up yesterday in the Aussie as we saw weakness in the dollar, and the US dollar, excuse me. Um, we did get a little bit of a breakout here uh, last night for those of you that took that little breakout, but it's already come back and retested that area. And so since we're retesting this area, this region, I think it's worth looking at, you know, uh, this market close area yesterday. Unfortunately, we're getting a bit of basing in front of it, which makes it a little bit weaker. Um, so, you know what, with the basing, I'm going to remove it. Just I'm, I'd rather be safe than sorry on that kind of a position. Whereas, you know, if we come back down into this region here, this is a much better reversal opportunity. Um, that, that would be a pullback to right in here, which was a former area of resistance in the past. And that's why I really like this region down in here. So we may get a little bit of a pullback into that, uh, into that zone. If we do get a pullback into that zone, I, the only way for me to get in on that is a, some sort of a breakdown. If I get a quality breakdown opportunity. Um, and so looking at it on a 15 minute, it would have to be below here. Now, the downside of that is that I do have this demand down below me. So I think your better opportunities right now are to be cautious and wait for price to come back into this demand area or wait for a breakout above us. Don't force an Aussie, an Aussie trade today. Next, the euro. So looking at our euro level, this was another one yesterday where we got, we just had a couple of levels yesterday that got stopped out and then we got a decent reversal on the level just below. The euro was that same picture. Uh, as our wick over wick area got hit through. Um, and so now looking at our four hour, we are pretty sideways. So I don't want to add much to this level at the, at the, at this point, I'm going to hold off as we still have a good breakout area up in here. Canadian dollar came back into our flip area and we're basing below that level. So since we're basing below that level, 
I'm going to look for a potential breakout area up above here, knowing that my first target would be this supply area up above us. Uh, looking at the Great British Pound and Japanese Yen. So in our pound trades, very similar to what our euro position did, we had a small level um, where we did come back into it. We got a little bounce off of that level on the 15-minute, um, but, but our six-candle rule definitely applied. Not, not a whole lot of great movement there, and we reversed and came down. Now this one, we've changed directions. If I go to the four-hour, um, we may have put in a lower swing low and a lower swing high right in here on our four hour, right? So swing low, swing high, lower than this swing low, um, giving me the, the ability to go short on a pullback up into a good level. And so now I look up here and my eyes are immediately drawn to this area right here. Um, as the best pullback opportunity. If we can make it back to there, I don't know that we will. You do have another little level right in here. Both of those, I think, are, are quality enough zones. Uh, and then the Japanese yen, this thing just continues to run higher. As I look at my four-hour chart, we finally broke above that, uh, that resistance point that we were kind of chopping around sideways in. And so now I need a quality area for a retracement to get long, or I'm going to need a lot of basing in order for me to get a pop-up and an opportunity to get long. So either one of those. But I'm not looking for shorts. So a couple of stopouts yesterday. You know, the NASDAQ stopout, the, uh, the, the bonds and the euro. Uh, you know, those are, those are why we love our stops. Uh, the S&P demand level worked out really, really well. So too did the secondary demand level in the NASDAQ. Uh, and so we had a, you know, kind of a mixed bag of a day yesterday, which, by the way, every trader has mixed bags of a day. Uh, and that's what we saw in these uh, in these markets. So, you know, when I see that happen, when I see myself get stopped out on a couple of those positions, usually what that does is sets me up for some really nice, strong trending moves. And that's what I'm hoping for is we're going to come out of this in some of these levels. So if you guys have any questions, as always, send us an email support at tradersarmy.com. Um, I appreciate you guys joining us, and I will talk to you soon. Later.